Many years ago, when I first started, uh, I replaced uh, a fellow in uh, Red Price Sox Band. Red oh, yeah. Price Sox Band, Sox Band had come to Dayton, Ohio, uh -huh. and the guitar player had quit. And I was a young fellow, had a reputation somewhat in Cincinnati, and uh, he asked for someone uh, to replace his guitarist. And someone here recommended me, and that's how I got my first road job. Well, let's say starting into jazz and blues. Earlier, I'd been, done some road work with a group called the students who I used to be in a singing group. Okay. But uh, so Dayton played a major role in my early beginnings, you know, when I started out. Okay, now as I understand it, uh, you first started off in Mobile, Alabama? Well, I was I was born in Mobile, Alabama, and I, was, I left there as a young child. Uh -huh. I didn't know anything about it. Okay. And I migrated to Cincinnati uh -huh. at the age of three, and I've been there ever since. Uh, that's how that works. Okay, so that's the time you first came into music in uh, Cincinnati, correct? I was in Cincinnati as a young uh, teenager, right. relatively uh, early teens when I got involved in music. And uh, to what do we owe your visit here today? Well, uh, I'm here today to celebrate a special occasion with a man that also played an instrumental part in my career, uh, Hank Marr. I see. Hank and I, uh, I joined him uh, that was, uh, I guess, in the early part of my career when I was getting my footing, and he uh, provided a lot of uh, musical support to some of my concepts that I later developed. And the first record that I recorded was with Hank Marr, uh, an album that we recorded over in Col Columbus, Ohio, at a club called the 502 Club. All right. And it was called Live at the 502, so that's the first time I appeared on a record. It was with Hank Marr. I see. And, uh, it's so nice that here, much later, 30 years later, we re-recorded a CD, Hank's CD, called Groovin' It. And on that CD, we revisited some of the uh, earlier times uh, when I recorded with him, my first recording. And we even did one of the songs, which was very popular back then, called Easy Talk. We redid it in 97. I say the 90s, let's say like that, because the album was recorded in 96. But, um, we even added some of the older songs that we did. So I've been doing a tour with Hank uh, to commemorate those times. Okay, what label was that on? That was on the King Federal label, I think. I'm not sure it was one of their labels. I see. Uh, but Hank was recording for King Records back in those days. All right, and uh, what are you doing now as far as uh, are you doing anything for recording? Or are you uh, working on some uh, new material? Well, I'm always pursuing, I have a publishing company, and I'm always pursuing and helping other youngsters as well uh, as writers develop. And I've always had that company called Wee Production I've had for the last 20 some years. That was something I always did in the background. I had a radio show in uh, Cincinnati for about three years called Jazz Flight. Uh, which gave me an opportunity to do my broadcasting skills. <laughs> so I've been doing a lot of things, and uh, we're going to Europe and touring and doing a lot of things, and I'm still working on some new work for myself as well. I see you're wearing a lot of hats now, huh? I'm wearing a lot of hats. Okay. <laughs> well, um, the uh, show tonight, uh, you two shows? I think it's a couple of shows and maybe three according to how the crowd acts. I see. You know, and I think uh, if you get carried away, you never know. Well, um, I know that there's a lot of fans here, and uh, um, I look forward to shout out myself. Well, you know, this is a, a wonderful occasion. It's always good for me to come back today because I have a lot of friends here, and it's always good to see them when I come. And uh, Dayton is just like home to me, I, you know, second home to me. I have a lot of people over here that are from uh, different various groups, uh, Sugarfoot, and, uh, Ohio Players, and Slade. A lot of guys that I know oh, yeah. through in the business and they is a Roger and all the cats. I mean, you know, this this is a major, uh, a major musical mecca for the Midwest as well as uh, Cincinnati and, and some of the places. And we have our own uniqueness about it. We're well, definitely a big family. 
Uh, tell me something. Uh, how do you feel uh, and what do you find as far as younger crowds now? Do you see that there's, uh, uh, do you see that there's more of a uh, younger crowd that can support jazz here? Here in Dayton yes. or worldwide? Worldwide. Well, you believe it or not, uh, especially in Europe mm -hmm. uh, and in Asia, places like the Philippines, places where I go, to, uh, the, to my delight, their very teenagers even are involved. Mm -hmm. Even to the extent, sort of like, that they are here in the States with hip hop, uh, they have that kind of feeling for jazz and uh, popular music. It's, it's, it's really something to see. And as far as the States is go, uh, going, I believe that there's always going to be uh, kids that want to go off and you know pursue other types of sounds other than just the status quo, such as uh, R&B, hip hop, etc. So I always try to have that uh, uh, flavor to add into my music that it, it seems to lend over to all ages. Uh, yeah, yeah. What I mean by that is. I try to carry something that everyone can relate to. I understand. Youngsters as well as old. Well, um, looking forward to a fabulous concert that goes on without saying. And uh, um, Nathan's glad to have you. Well, I'm glad to be here and I hope to see some of my friends tonight. If uh, we get to some new time, <laughs> maybe we can uh, get a little press, you know. I definitely understand. Yeah. Well, it's our pleasure. My pleasure well, thank coming you for coming and being here with us. And Dayton, you have it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.